<laughs> Getting a little organized here. Not that I'm ever really organized. Seems like I'm always a little bit disorganized. Or maybe I'm organized in a chaotic kind of manner. Or maybe the chaos is by, well, you get the idea. <laughs> it's probable that I enjoy the way that life has kind of arranged itself around me and caused me to adapt to it. That I can sit back and kind of enjoy it for what it is. Kind of recognize it for what it's becoming. Except the day that I'm living in. I kind of enjoy that part of my life. Being able to accept life as it comes at me. Being able to rejoice in those things that I see happening to me, even getting old. <laughs> it slows me down. I kind of like that idea of being slowed down because God's been teaching me lately about what the priorities are living in the last days. I thought I understood that, you know, being that I grew up for 30 years now, maybe 35 years with the expectation that Jesus is coming in my generation. And I know that without a doubt, beyond any shadow of a question in my mind. I plan my entire adulthood around the very concept and knowledge that Jesus is coming and that I am not going to see my grandchildren grow up or my nieces and nephews in my case because I really don't have any children. You know, I kind of took serious that thought that Jesus said, woe unto those that give suck in those days when he was warning the mothers in Jerusalem that, oh no, watch out because in those days that we're talking about now that it would be a bad time coming and that things were going to get pretty serious and that just like when Jesus was born, they slaughtered all the children. You know, Rachel was mourning for her children, for they were no more. That in the last days, there would be mothers mourning for their children because they would be slaughtered. It's kind of sad when you think about it. Because if you don't know what's coming, you don't know how to be prepared. I mean, frankly, if... I knew that somebody was going to break into my house, you know, I'd get ready. I would, you know, plan out having some burglar alarms, you know, and some, some security, you know, and have, you know, people watching, you know, just to be ready in case a thief would pr try to break into my house. And that's kind of what Jesus said, you know, that if we knew what, the, what day or the hour. But since we don't, we need to be ready all the time. And that's kind of how I've lived my life is I knew that based upon my studies that no, Jesus wouldn't return before 2012, but I kind of knew that. That was kind of obvious because of the Mayan calendar being you know, what it was and people being all upset and shook up and you know excited. I remember them getting excited about the comet Kohotek. Ooh, Kohotek's coming. Ooh, and I remember looking through my little telescope, you know, and it was like only this long, and it was one of those cheapy telescopes, you know, that everybody used to buy, and you really couldn't see anything in it. But I remember looking in it and, like, you know, kind of pulling it back in and out, you know. Ah, so that's a comet. wasn't like the Space Hubble, you know, telescope where we could see now these huge things, you know, and get even more panic. <gasps> but, you see, I don't really get panicked over earthquakes and floods and you know those things that are happening in the world because I'm prepared. I spent 35 years getting ready for such a time as this. I'm kind of excited to live my life in the last days, the last generation before Jesus comes. Ooh, I want to go out with a bang. I want to go out with a witness. I want to go out with a testimony. How about you? How do you want to be remembered? Because right now, Angels are recording everything that's going on. They're looking down and going, Man, Jesus, are they getting ready? Are they prepared? Are they kind of like, you know, excited about your coming? Or are they just kind of like cruising and snoozing and wind up losing it because they're not ready for when you return? And I think, Well, I'm trying to tell them, Lord, but they just ain't listening. So 
So I don't know about you, but you know, I kind of enjoy my life. I enjoy what days are left of mankind's rule because while some things look beautiful, I know based upon the Word of God that creation groans in travail waiting for the revelation of the sons of God because then the curse will be lifted and suddenly plant life will become alive. Yes, more so than what you think you see. I mean, don't get me wrong, you guys are beautiful, but hey, you know, it kind of might be nice if, you know, you can fully bloom instead of just partially bloom. Like, you know, the rose, you know what a rose looks like. A rose by any other name would not be a rose, but did you know that the thorns on a rose are part of the curse? Yeah, the thorns on a rose bush are undeveloped blooms. They really aren't supposed to be there. Because that's what God said, thorns and thistles you would reap. But, you know, when the curse is lifted, <gasps> ooh, creation gets to give one more burst of glorious growth. Of course, that'll probably happen in the kingdom of God, where Jesus is. I don't guarantee it's going to happen in the entire world, because God's going to kind of clear mankind's inventions of everything there is in the world and during that thousand years hey some of it may be kind of like you know like uh, recovering from all the devastation that came upon the world because God's wrath came upon it so it may take you know a good you know two or three hundred years for it to kind of like grow up again but look around you get to live for a thousand years and see the world kind of grow up the way it's supposed to grow man Let's get on with it, don't you think? So, I'm kind of spending my time looking forward to that while I'm living in my day-to-day -day existence, sharing the Word of God, but looking forward to His coming. Because really, I can't wait for that millennium to happen. It's going to be beautiful. No technology, get rid of it. You know, None of this kind of like, you know, let's make steel you know, out of all the things and consequences and all the you know yucky stuff that goes with it that we try to ignore, oh well, you know, we don't admit that, you know, we had to do some things that kind of harmed, you know, the world and God's creation when we were making all these other things, you know, like plastics and electricity and doing things that kind of, there was a price to pay, but we passed it on to the next generation and the next one and the next one. Well, in the tribulation, God says, okay, time to pay, pay up, and he demands a price and it ain't pretty. Oh well. So, in the millennium, we get to do it God's way, not our way. And I kind of look forward to that. So today, I kind of enjoy my day based upon God's way and not your way or the American way or the American dream or anybody else's dream. I like living reality. You know, reality with God. You know, seeing the kingdom of God now and enjoying it to come. Awake to righteousness and sin not. You are all children of light and children of the day. Cool. I like that. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. I think it's a good idea. It is high time to awake out of the sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I think about that, you know, sometimes the people tell me about all this kind of fancy armor they got, you know, they show me these pictures of like all these shields, you know, and metal and structure and I think, my armor of light really is just the love that shines bright out of my inner soul from the being that I am to the outward manifestation that people see of the light shining forth from within me. Jesus is that light. And as Jesus begins to take away my flesh and make it die to itself, he becomes more bright inside me, more alive to those that can see me. And they no longer see me, but they see him who is in me. And I think that's the armor of light. At least it is for me. Now maybe for you, you have something else going on. Okay. I just happen to like Jesus in me and for people to see that more than they see me. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, just stand. Just stand. Just stand. 
cast away from you all your transgressions, where you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Try it today. Start today and go forward. You don't have to worry about yesterday. Start today. New heart, new spirit. Go a different direction. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Hmm. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Jesus is called the word of God. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. He that hath ears to hear. Do you think there might be a lesson there? Little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. It's always easy to make a choice. You can choose to do the right thing or the wrong thing. It's not a question of the choice of lesser evils. The choice is no evil. You see, there are people that tell me today that, well, you know, you got to kind of, you know, you have to make a decision one way or the other. Well, no, I don't. Having done all, I can stand on the righteousness of God and do nothing at all except stand. For if I commit my way unto the Lord, and I trust also in Him, then He will direct my path. And if He tells me to stand still and see the salvation that He brings, I will stand still and watch and do nothing. Because, you see, there are people that want you to make a decision. Well, you've got to do something. Sometimes God says, do nothing at all. But wait on the Lord. Because if you're making a choice between good, supposedly, and evil, supposedly, make sure that it's God saying which is good and which is evil. Because mankind always comes up with these one or the other decisions. They're called duality. You either are making a decision to do or not do. Sometimes God says, no, be still and know that I'm God. Because see, when you be still, the whole world goes nuts. They have no idea what to do with a man who is confidently standing and waiting on the Lord. Well, well, well what do you mean you're going to wait on the Lord? Well, but, 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 but aren't you going to do something about it? No, I'm not. I'm going to wait. But 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 you got to do something. You got to take some step of faith. You know, you, you've heard of that, right? Step of faith. You know, it's written there in the Bible somewhere. You know, somewhere it's written. Step of faith. I'm I'm sure it's here somewhere. Let me let me get my concordance and look it up. Step of faith. Quotes. Put it in quotes. Step of faith. Let's see. Look it up in my my Google. Oh, there's no quote for step of faith. Huh. Well, what are you going to do then? Have faith. I don't need a step of faith. I have faith. I either have faith or I don't. Pretty simple for me. Because if I wait on the Lord and trust also in Him, He shall bring it to pass. But if I step forward in faith, forcing the issue, then I'm suffering the consequences of my decision-making process. If God tells me to go forward, hey, I go forward. If He says take one step, I take one step. If He says take two, take two. He says, walk as slow as the slowest among you will go, then I will walk as slow as the slowest among us will go. Because after all, I won't leave anybody behind. Now the world in Christendom sometimes says, yeah, but you know, you want to save as many as you can, so leave those ones behind to get the thousands you could collect. Mm, no, I don't think so. The one may be the one that's all that's needed to be done with the world and its ways. If that one person I left behind is all that's holding us back from going home to be with the Lord, I think that one person is more important than the thousands that I could reach. Because after all, there are thousands that like to say they know the Lord. But many are called and few are chosen. So, I don't know about you, but I kind of kind of like the idea that I need to go with God than go with my own ideas. I like this whole concept I need to be with God than be with my own thought process. I kind of like this whole thing about turning it over to God and the Son and leaving it there 
than letting someone tell me what I got to do. I don't got to do nothing. I only got to listen to the Lord. Because after all, He is my Lord and my Savior. I don't know if He's your Lord because I don't know if you're doing what He tells you to do. But according to His Word, I think He just did. Because He said, You know that everyone that does righteously and righteousness is born of Him. Do the right thing, which is to do what God tells you to do. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Look it up. My sheep hear my voice. Ooh. What's that you say? Huh? 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 What did he say? What did he say? My sheep read my voice. You know, the words in red. Oh, the words in red. I see. I want to stick with those. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Imagine that. Hmm. Now, of course, we're talking about reading, right? We're not talking about real. We're talking about like a simile and a metaphor. We don't mean that literally. That can't be true, can it? It's got to be like exaggerated. It's got to be like interpreted. We've got to make something out of it that just can't be read by anybody. It must be understood in some kind of mystical, magical way, you know, like some kind of carpet ride, you know. We've got to make it fit our own reality. <laughs> Whoa. Try that on for size. I think it says, my sheep hear my voice. Hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door. I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Funny how that works. It does say hear his voice. Funny how it says knocking. Hmm. Funny how people have seen that picture and then make it into something it's not. What if it really is true that Jesus would knock at your door? What if Jesus appeared outside your door today? What if you heard a knock at the door and you said, ah, no, go away. <laughs> one of those JWs, you know, or one of those Mormon missionaries, I'm sorry, can't deal with you guys. And Jesus says, entertain strangers unawares and bring them in for such I might be disguised as. Or possibly in the middle of the night you hear a knock and you say, oh, Lord, that can't be you, you know, make the rapture next year, you know, or make it later, you know, I, I'm knocking, I hear you knocking, but you know, you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you know, I'm a little busy. I need to sleep because I got to get up for work in the morning. I hear you knocking, but not now. Do you get the picture? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, any, interesting. It's written to Christians, but it says, if any man hear my voice. The problem being is that Christians have a theology that sometimes makes the eology of God less than what God is. God will meet anytime, anywhere, any place with anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord because he wants to save and he will save to the uttermost. So there may be a lot of people that seem not religious but yet take literal some things that God has said and may find salvation while the rest are kind of like working out their religious ideas in the midst of the tribulation. Ooh, what a place to figure it out. Ouch! But he did warn us. He did tell us, didn't he? Behold, I said at the door, not. And I will come in to him and sup with him, and he with me. When you make your household open to the Lord, when you make your door wide open to those strangers that you would allow in, when you are able to share that which God has blessed you with, then God is able to open the door for you to come in and sup with Him. Because then He will bless you as you bless others. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer.
Life was filled with guns and war, with rumors of war, with Israel attacking Iran, with America making its plan, with people voting in their own way, people deciding their own decisions, everyone choosing to do what they think is right in their own eyes. And everyone got trampled at the rock concert, and people got trampled at the latest gizmo to be sold for the iPhone or iPad, or the Walmart special, or the wait in line for those special tickets to get free, come, wait, be here for three days and three nights, and you'll receive the reward. I wish we'd all been ready. Because according to what Jesus said, two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be at work, one shall be taken, the other left. Jesus said, if that man had known what hour their Lord would return, he would have prepared ahead of time. And Jesus is saying, he stands at the door and knocks. Do you hear his voice? Are you learning to? Are you taking the times that you're supposed to in the morning, in the noon, in the night, to be with God? Do you love him as your delight, as the Song of Solomon just now spoke? Will your beloved be not there when you open the door and you call out to him and he does not answer you? I wish we'd all been ready. And I wish we all will be ready. But we won't. We'll. The choice is yours. It's a simple decision to make. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Jesus, 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 I love you. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? The question he asks us, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you? Life was filled with guns and war. I wish we'd all been ready. Speak for thy servant hear it. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide in your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. I've been having a good time enjoying the garden, the sunshine. Just the wonderful way that the sun filters. Have you ever noticed that when sunrise happens? It's almost like at that slant, it just comes through the window in the morning. It just kind of like wakens up, it shines down at a slant and all the little dust particles. And sometimes you can see the little rays of sunshine when it's coming through the window. Have you ever seen that through the plants or through the trees? How the sun filters through and shines on little spots of light and you enjoy it like a picnic, like taking time to rest, to relax, to be still. Every one of us in our day needs those moments to be still, to be quiet, to be calm. Because you see, the world really is good. 
at giving us everything else except peace. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. I give you my peace. And in that way, we know we are His children. Peace. Be still. And know.